So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to prepare an altered book, which an altered book is a book that you can buy from a flea market, a car boot sale. Um, they're hardback. It's best to get them to be hardback so that they're more durable. Um, and they also um, have to be, the binding has to be sewn in, in signatures, because when you get your book, you buy your book, you can get them for like 50p if you're, if you're clever about it and just buy a load of them. Um, it doesn't really matter what's in the book. I think the most important thing is that it's hard and because you're going to be using this book over a long period of time and it has to be durable. And also the size of the book's really important. Don't go for a little tiny one. You want to get one that's slightly big enough because you're going to be putting images into it. Um, so there's no point having something teeny tiny, unless you want to work teeny tiny, that is. So I bought my book. In fact, I was very lucky. My mum gave me this because I asked her to have a clear out. It was a book on wedding flowers. It doesn't matter what's in the book. Um, it's actually quite interesting to sort of use what's in the book afterwards, but that's something that we'll go through at a later stage. So now I have just kind of made sure that I've got all my pages put down. And in order to make the book more durable, because you're going to be putting collage and you're going to put in paint and it's going to be, it's going to have some heavy duty stuff on it. You have to gesso the book, gesso the pages. And gesso is basically white acrylic paint. I, you don't need to buy expensive stuff. This is system three. I got this, um, uh, God, I was really lucky. Uh, an art shop was closing down, so I got a whole load of stuff. I went in and spent a fortune, but um, a whole load of stuff at half price. You can buy student acrylic um, primer. It's This is just a base, and the idea is to cover up your pages. So get yourself a decent big brush, because you don't want to be spending hours doing it on with a teeny tiny brush and wasting loads of time. Get yourself a big brush and just start to cover the pages. I've probably got a little bit too much water on here, to be fair. Um, so the idea is to get, oh, let's get an old rag. I've got loads of these. Um, and just start covering up the pages with primer. Um, gesso primer, you can just buy online or from an art shop. It's not, it shouldn't be too expensive. A big, nice vat like this, this goes a long way. And the idea is to cover up the images because you're going to be starting to create your own images, which is the exciting bit. But um, it's quite therapeutic doing this. You have to have a bit of patience because obviously the whole book has to be done. And you have to wait for it to dry, which is where the patience comes in. And which is why what I've done, my maybe putting a little bit too much water on it, it's going to take a bit of time. But some people like to go right to the edge and some people like to leave a border. Um, it doesn't matter. I suppose this sort of follows the line with art journaling that there are no rules, this is yours, you do what you want. Um, there's maybe a few technical things that will help you in the process, but I don't think in actually kind of how you want to do it, if you want to go to the edge or not, it doesn't matter. Um, I actually personally like to go right to the edge. It's just, just the way it is. I don't think there's any particular reason why. I think just, um, yeah, because I kind of am making it my book, I think, that's the thing. Um, so I've just done a double page spread. And because it takes time to dry, what I really like to do is, I tend to work on quite a few at the same time um, because I've got to wait for that to dry. So this is another book which I bought, again, it wasn't an expensive book. It was from uh, the car boot sale in Winchester. Um, it wasn't a very interesting book, actually. I think it was about antiques. But there are some bits and bobs in there that are quite interesting. But So I've slowly worked my way through all these pages, as you can see. It's taken me a bit of time. But as I said, I kind of have a few on the go at the same time. So while I'm waiting for that one to dry that I've just prepared, I'm going to do another page. Um, this is probably not anything very interesting on this page. There's, I kind of like that, and I might keep some of it. So um, 
I'm going to just show you for just for the sake of so you can see the technique. So I will cover all this up because I'm not interested in this at all. Um, and as you can see, it's not really, really thickly, heavily covered up. Um, you can put a bit more on. Uh, you know, sometimes you use, as I said, what's coming through can become part of the your new story that you start art journaling. But this is kind of nice, but I don't want it to dominate everything. So I might just push it back a little bit, maybe just thin it out. Um, when I show you further down the line some more techniques, there are ways of bringing back what's underneath um, by using certain materials, which is kind of the exciting bit as well. So. Um, that is me just prepping a couple of pages. It's water-based, so it's going to dry quite quickly, but you've still got to wait for it to dry. And I suppose it just mat all it matters is um, how much space you've got, so you can just keep quite a few going at the same time. But what I'll do is I will just leave that, put that back on for another day, and then wait for my altered book to dry. And then I can get on and do some art journaling.